It seems that reports of my survival have been greatly exaggerated. This is impossible. But I assure you, it is. How? Not how. Why? You were never meant to come here. We have our orders. Leave the city, radio command from outside the Stormwall. They send in the cavalry, we go home. Hello there. Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Spec Ops The Line FUBAR difficulty video walkthrough. This is chapter one, the evacuation, and this is probably my surprise of the year. And I say that quite liberally. I played the demo for this game and I thought the demo was trash. I thought it was really bad guys, I really did. And I didn't have a lot of faith in the final product and I ended up getting this game very late. But when I got it, I was extremely surprised to find that underneath the, the pretty lacklustre third person shooting, uh, you know, beneath the pretty clunky bad movement and very interesting and broken design choices when it comes to certain aspects of controlling your character, that there was actually a pretty interesting story, uh, a well told if not ultimately unsatisfying narrative and environments and pacing that, that I really enjoyed. And that is rare these days because you either get fantastic games or you get games that aren't even worth your time. You really do. There's generally not that middle of the range title that, that turns up. And I've mentioned this in previous videos so I'm not going to retread that. Anybody wanting strategy on this section, my only tip is literally know where the choppers are coming from and then shoot them and keep your aimer on them as best you can. It's a little bit difficult because it's moving, it's a little bit difficult because the sensitivity is, is, is a little finicky on the on rails moments, but if you've already beat the game, which you need to do to unlock full bar difficulty, you should be fine when it comes to this section. But yeah very surprised with this title. My main surprise comes from the fact that I played this game a, a year and a half before it came out because I got into the private beta and a lot of my problems I had with the beta are in the final game so the, the long list of things that I pointed out that was wrong never got fixed which is a very big shame and it just goes to show that as much as we think our opinions are valued at the end of the day we don't have the final say and we're just anonymous voices on the internet. But full bar difficulty is pretty renowned at this moment in time. Every forum I visited before I played this game mentioned how difficult this this setting was. Uh, all of them were, you know, building the hype machine, very similar to Dark Souls. And I'm here to, to bring everybody back down. I'm here to ground you in the knowledge that full bar difficulty is not that hard. The only reason this difficulty can be difficult which is me saying that word about several times more than necessary, is if you play the game wrong. What I mean by this, if you're close to any enemy on this game, you will die. If you're out of cover and there are enemies present, you will die. As long as you bear those two facts in mind, you should be good. A couple of things that are going to frustrate you through, uh, through certain moments. Your team are extremely powerful. The best strategy you can do on this game in certain moments is use your team to shoot people, especially if the enemies are close because if you pop up you'll probably die. The only problem with your team is if you tell them to shoot somebody who's quite far away it will generally mean that they'll move out of cover to get close to the person so they can shoot them and during this process they'll go down and if one of them goes down you can send the other one to heal him and a lot of the cases on the hardest difficulty he'll go down as well and there's pretty much a 0% success rate of reviving people in this game because you are not invulnerable while you're doing the revive animation and if there's any enemies that can see you because the the set to so aggressive and so accurate you're pretty much dead before you can get back in cover and that is not even mentioning how unresponsive and annoying the cover can be at time at times so you know it's a real bad situation but to, to bring the, the point back this is not that hard there are one or two sections which feel like they could be hard but if you do them intelligently you'll get through them fine everything else is pretty standard it's pretty fun just try and play it safe ammunition as I mentioned is is a problem there are times when you'll not have any bullets I would recommend sticking to the weapons you enjoy I personally do not like the sniper rifles at all because I think the aiming is far too finicky and unless you get a headshot it's a two-shot kill so it's a waste of fucking time 
Uh, always try and keep two assault rifles on you. Uh, I wouldn't mess about with the shotguns because they're too unreliable, uh, too too unpredictable. Grenades are useful, but they're not a necessity. Uh, one thing to bear in mind as well, if you know that there's an area where you can use the environment against your opponents, always use it because it'll save you ammo. But literally stay in cover, pop out and shoot and be as quick as you physically can. Only take one target at a time, never get greedy. And if anybody's close, never pop out. Just blind fire and be careful because you can get shot when you blind fire. And use your team. That is literally it, guys. The... There's a couple of moments where I'm going to be able to tell you about strategy, but for the most, it just isn't needed. If you've played Gears of War 3 on Insane, you should be okay with this. Because it's the same rules, the same principles. If you're out of cover, you're dead. If you're in cover, you've got a chance. If you're accurate, you've got a chance. And this first sequence, you can shoot the glass above them, which drops the sand. I was waiting for my team to engage, but you don't have to. You can just do that. Now, one thing that is worth paying attention to, the the third person camera shooting trick. Uh, I speak about it on pretty much every game like this, and uh, how it works is your bullets come from the centre of the screen, they don't come from the tip of your gun. And you can exploit the camera so that you can go up to the edge of a surface and shoot around it without ever showing your body and being vulnerable. A lot of people know of this trick, a lot of people use this trick, it makes third person shooters a lot easier than they need to be. It doesn't work on this game, guys. Uh, I'm absolutely stunned. Uh, a lesser title with a smaller developer suite has fixed the exploit that pretty much breaks the difficulty on every other third-person shooter. But this one is fixed. So that's a good thing in some reasons. It's a bad thing in some respects. So it's, you know, it's all preference at that point. As far as the firing goes, if you want to be stealthy, put your suppressor on. It can be useful for certain areas, but a lot of the times people are going to know you're there, so it's, it's not a necessity. It does make your bullets a little less damaging, I believe. So it's you know it's a choice of whether or not you do it. Always pop shot, never hold the trigger. The guns on this game are not very accurate at the best of times, let alone when you've got very small amounts of ammunition. And it's just distance. Always keep your distance. Distance on this game is power. The, the more distance you have from the opponents, the better you're going to, to, to fare in that gunfight couple of things I would warn you about. The run on this game is terrible. It was terrible on the beta, it's terrible in the final game. And it's only because they've mistaken a certain, you know, certain archetypes that a lot of games have done in the past, done it well, and done it fine. And it starts really promising. You tap A and you begin running. From there, you don't have to hold, hold the button, it'll do it by itself and you can just carry on, which is a good idea. The problem comes in trying to stop. Usually on a game like this, you'd be holding the button and you can let go and it would stop. But on this game it doesn't, and if you press it A again, it does nothing. You literally have to cancel out of the sprint to stop yourself from sprinting. And the problem with this is it makes you extremely vulnerable because there's recovery frames in all of these different animations. One way to, to stop him from running is if you double tap on back on the analog. I think not back the button, you know, literally the analog itself. If you, if you tap away from the camera's facing, it can stop him from running. It's not very intuitive, it doesn't feel smooth at all, and on a difficulty where you die out of cover in seconds, it can make you feel very vulnerable. Especially when you want to run. Another issue I had with the running mechanic is when you try and run towards cover, sometimes the game doesn't automatically put you in cover. So you have to press the button to go into it. So it, it puts you in these moments where, in reality, they might only be a couple of seconds long, but to you they feel like an eternity because you're trying to get in cover and you're in danger. And it's really unnecessary and it's it sucks that they're in the game because it should have been smoother, it should have been ironed out. This game's been in development for six years. There's no excuse for it. There really isn't. And another thing that sucks about the sprint is how disorientating it is when you're trying to turn the camera while you're doing it. Like, I am by no means susceptible to screen shake. I've played Kane and Lynch 2. You know, the roadie run on gears never give me any kind of problem. But, I don't know how foreign did I sound then. The roadie run on gears never give me any kind of problem. Like, I, I don't mind camera shaking. But this game, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the sensitivity. I don't know if it's the way that they've programmed the, the animation of the shake. But I find it very difficult to, to see what you're doing. And you'll notice I never run. 
I very rarely run. I always keep this this, this standard pace because I just do not like how unsmooth and unintuitive the controls are. That being said, this game does a lot of things right. The shooting is bad. Do not be playing this expecting to get, you know, a, a majestic shooting experience. That's not what you're going to find here. What you are going to find is a very interesting and intense experience as far as a group of people in an impossible situation and uh, an interesting outcome which I don't want to talk about for the people that haven't played but the ending is a fucking cop art and that's pretty much what I'm going to say about that one of the things the game does really well is its sense of tension and fear uh, I've played quite a lot of games and when you're in a third person shooting game with your team I don't really get the feeling that any moment is really all that intense there's, there's a lot of shouting there's a lot of shooting there's a lot of flashes you know the enemies all around you it's epic there's music it feels you know another day in the office a lot of it and that's not a fault of the game designers it's more of a fault of, of the characters themselves and the mechanics of the game in this game you feel really vulnerable and when you're with your, your team and the enemies are coming towards you and they're shouting and they're, they're actually shouting because, you know, they're starting to break down. The, the professionalism is gone. They're just the human beings in trouble and they're afraid. And there's a real visceral feeling to some of the moments in this game, which I think is, is brilliant. It completely makes up for how, you know, lacking some of the, the actual gameplay is. I think the interaction between the characters is great. I like how they, they gradually get less and less, you know, holding things together. They get a bit more manic, and it, it definitely builds towards a crescendo towards the end. I like the struggle. I like that this game is, is daring to do things that a lot of people will deem quite shocking, quite offensive. I like that a lot. And I also like how it makes you face your responsibilities. This does come at a price, though. The game gives the illusion of choice in some situations where you don't have one and I think that's a little bit of bullshit but for the most it, it comes through on a lot of those different areas and I think that's great the other thing about this game that I really like is the environments it is a beautiful game environmentally and artistically it's not gonna you know wow anybody it's not gonna set the standards of, of visual fidelity because there are still rough edges but I just think that the design I think Dubai itself I think the sand uh, I, I think everything about it is a setting that hasn't been done enough and they've managed to do it really well so I'm super pleased with that and I just like the, the color schemes for a lot of it it reminds me of Mirror's Edge there was something about Mirror's Edge that I loved where there was a lot of primary colors a lot of whites you know a lot of modern uh, type of interior design it's just, just a cool thing I'd be very careful with this section here guys I got one-shotted by a guy in this room as I was moving to this piece of cover on my left. I don't know why it happened, and I've watched it back, and it's literally one bullet kill. Uh, it must have been a headshot. It must be just random, but it definitely made me respect this room I'm about to enter, which is why I'm not being too aggressive. But Something interesting about the game, when you get a headshot, the game slows down a little bit to show you that you've done something good. In that time, you can actually use it to aim at the next person. It's not very long, it's not going to give you a massive advantage, but it can enable you to, to chain a couple of headshots. A couple of tips with the ammunition. Because I'm always so scarce on this game, you want to always make sure that you're making the most of it. I am not going to show you in this gameplay the best way to make the most of the ammunition because I'm pretty lazy. I just shoot people and if I don't have any bullets I improvise and it does work but you can put yourself in a bad spot. So one thing to do is if you have quite a lot of bullets in your gun and you're nowhere near empty don't pick up any of the ammo. Kill everybody you can, come back later with the weapons that you want and then use the ammo boxes on them. A really good habit to get into is like the light machine gun. Light machine gun's really powerful, it's got a lot of bullets, and if there's a couple of ammo boxes lying around and there's a light machine gun on the floor, pick up the light machine gun, use the ammo boxes to fill the gun you want, and it just makes you a much more efficient killer, essentially. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy this one, and for everybody who's afraid of FUBAR difficulty, don't be. It's not that bad, guys, it really isn't, and with these videos, you should get through it fine. So thank you for watching, and you take care now.